Westmoreland's note to General Van? Uh, just this moment, uh, sorry, I just got back from uh, Mrs. Gandhi and a magazine editors. Um, by the way, before we get on to that, I didn't get much out of her this morning. I just sat there and listened to what I considered to be a rather uh, limited and uh, uh, superficial discussion of the uh, problems. Uh, just uh, mm -hmm. just uh, said that uh, wasn't anybody going to be starving, and that uh, they did, uh, if they got some extra aid, why well, it would be important to prevent malnutrition, but that. Uh, uh, there was no great uh, uh, demand for it or, or, or sense of urgency in any of her conversation. And she kind of concluded by saying, of course, we think you would like to have a good, strong democracy, and it would be very much to your interest that you have that. But uh, uh, that was about the net of it. And I kept <laughs> leading her and trying to wait for her and trying to encourage her. and. Uh, uh, there just not much came out. Mm -hmm. Well, well I, I had the same experience at lunch sitting next to her. First place, uh, she didn't uh, take any initiative. Uh, I had to keep she pulling at her. Didn't, rather than didn't do it. Didn't do any this morning with me, and I, I, I worked at it for over an hour. Yeah. And I just really pulled at it. I didn't do the talking. I asked her to do it, and and I didn't make any commitments either. And I asked her if uh, she realized that. Uh, uh, this is, uh, I had this problem with my parliament, and she, she said subterranean, made this commitment to Freeman on fertilizer and just uh, played hell with his parliament, and they were all jumping on him and said he had no right to make it, and he shouldn't have made it, and she had to take the position now that it was made by another prime minister, and that she was going to try to live up to it, but it was very difficult, and uh, that was just the general approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to... Uh, we have to talk to the ambassador a little bit, try to find out really what we have to do there. Right, um, and um, perhaps we ought to have a word with Chet, so that Chet might find a way to spur her to come be a little more forthcoming. Uh, you're sitting next to her at dinner tonight. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't want her to know that I didn't think that she made a very good case, but she sure as hell did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if somebody else hasn't made a case for her, uh, well, I, I just said I I told them that if we don't do something in the in the food field, that we could uh, have as many people die in India this year as we got in Vietnam. And she said, Oh, there's not going to be anyone die from food. She said that's exaggerated. She said there may be some malnutrition come about. But, yeah. You know, I just saw the Times story this morning. Said 35, 40 million. Yeah. <laughs> and well, now on this Westmoreland war, I. I just feel like we just haven't done enough to prevent losing that government out there yet. I don't know what else we can do, but I just, uh, it's going to be so much more difficult to rebuild a government than it is to hold one we got if we could do it. I, I thought maybe in view of the fact that the Lodge concurred in Westmoreland's wire, uh, that we might say to Lodge, this is excellent. We're glad to see that you get in Westmoreland and do that. We hope that you will uh, uh, say substantially the same thing to every Buddhist element there. Mm -hmm. and really put it up to them high-handed because we need, we can't take this back home. Yeah. If uh, if uh, uh, Westmoreland, if anybody ever know besides you and me that Westmoreland says abuse of United States military presence in the North and reaches Republic is inconsistent with the spirit of solidarity that unites our forces. And such abuse not only degrades troop morale, but places me in a difficult, embarrassing situation, attempting to explain it. And uh, is unjustified abuse to United States policy reflected in a succession of radio broadcasts with display of English language signs intended to provoke U.S. military personnel, the same personnel whose sacrifice of life and limb has played an important role. If our people got the idea that the Vietnamese are are, are insulting our men, Marines up in that northern area that are dying for them. Right. Why well, they'll 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 jump ahead of Bill Fulbright and Morris and telling us to get the hell out of there. And Lodge better let the damn Buddhists know that and straighten it out damn quick, or we better make our plans accordingly. I've got Alex Johnson in the next room. Let me go over this telegram with him and see what we can say to Lodge on it. All right. All right.